It is an absolutely beautiful day for football at Giants Stadium. And this afternoon, the West Virginia Mountaineers look to bring their record up to 10-0 for the first time in school history as they take on the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Hello again, everyone. I'm Tony Caridi, joined by John Garcia. Arguably, this is the most important game of the season for West Virginia. A victory here today can almost lock down a bid to the Fiesta Bowl, West Virginia's first major bowl bid since 1953. The opponent, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. They come in with a record of 4-5, and five, and John Garcia, they've lost three in a row after some big wins over Michigan State and Penn State. What's happened to this club? Well, lack of quality depth has certainly been a problem. You know, it's kind of like back in 1984 with the Mountaineers. Uh, when, when their starter was injured, they didn't have to somebody to come in and do a good job for them. Secondly, enthusiasm has been a big problem. They lost three in a row, and it's bound to affect their confidence level. On the positive side of the ledger, they have quarterback Scott Ernie, and this kid can be a big timer when he's on his game. If he has a hot hand, it should be a definite show for the Mountaineer fans. Should be an interesting game. Add to that the fact of a lack of depth, as John had mentioned. Three Rutgers starters on defense will not play today because of injuries. Stay tuned. West Virginia against the Rutgers Scarlet Knights coming up on the Mountaineer Sports Network. The crowd continues to file in here at Giant Stadium. An absolutely beautiful day. As you can see, sunshine blanketing the Meadowlands area of New Jersey. West Virginia has lost the opening toss. Rutgers winning it and has taken the option to handle the first kickoff of the ball game they will receive. The series history goes back all the way to 1916. The teams have played every year since 1980, and West Virginia has really dominated in the series, winning seven of the eight games. A year ago, West Virginia handled Rutgers without too much problem, a final score of 35 to 17. And Major Harris in that game, John Garcia, had a tremendous afternoon with 304 yards of total offense. Mountaineers piling it up, 293 yards on the ground on the average this season. Charlie Bauman all set to go to work, back deep to return. Eric Young for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. He's a dangerous one, and he'll take the opening kick. This is Young from the 12-yard line. Met there and put down by Darren Fulton. And the Rutgers Scarlet Knights will take over. They'll spot the ball on the 25-yard line. First down and 10. As you take a look there at number 22, Eric Young, a great kickoff man. In fact, he holds the career record for kickoff return yardage here at Rutgers, but also a dominant receiver for this Rutgers team. He'll line up as a split end. Comes into the ball game with 41 receptions, the team's leading receiver. And Rutgers loves to pass the ball. Scott Ernie has 295 attempts on the season. First down and 10. And Eric Young will go to the air. Man is back. McQueen, and he cannot come up with the play. Willie Edwards backtracking on the coverage as Rutgers starts off the ball game with some trickery. Willie Edwards at first bit on the run, but then he started... Moving downfield there, John Garcia, step for step with Tyrone McQueen, number five, and McQueen had that ball go right off of his chest. Dick Anderson pulling out all stops here, Tony, on the flanker reverse pass. Eric Young showing that he has the ability to throw the ball. West Virginia Willie Edwards bites a little bit on the run fake, but recovers well. A good throw by Eric Young. Second down and 10. That's James Cannon in motion. And the ball carrier is Mike Body, Chris Herring. Makes the tackle after a couple-yard pickup for Mike Body. Chris Herring just did an outstanding job on that play, Tony. Keeping that ball in contained and scraping right off the outside tackle hole there, keeping Body from getting outside. Pickup of two. It'll be third down and eight. So an obvious passing situation for Rutgers. Chris having just an outstanding year. He's the leading tackler by a total of 33 tackles. This guy's all over the football field. Scarlet Knights send out three receivers to the right. Third down and eight. Ernie with his first pass attempt of the afternoon. Has his man. It's intercepted by Daryl Whitmore. The red shirted freshman from Front Royal, Virginia, is in for the touchdown. The intended receiver, Brett Mersola, number 81. The ball deflected into that man's arms. Number 11, Darrell Whitmore, his fourth interception of the season, his first touchdown as a West Virginia Mountaineers. 
One minute and four seconds have gone by, and Daryl Whitmore puts West Virginia on the scoreboard. West Virginia in a man coverage that time. Rutgers in trips, three receivers to one side. Great, great defensive play. Brett Mersola is still on the ground, a super hit by Theron Ellis. Number 66 for West Virginia. Ellis came from behind, hitting Mersola. He's a senior out of Burbank, California. The ball deflected right into the arms of Daryl Whitmore. You know, Tony, you and I talked to Daryl this morning in the lobby, and I said, man, this guy is a big stud. He's got All-American written all over him. As we mentioned, he's still young, but in the years to come, Daryl Whitmore will be one of the better free safeties in the nation. Watch the great hit by Thrawn Ellis. Just unloads on this guy. Daryl Whitmore around the football, and that's a great sign of a great free safety. Be around the football and shows his athletic ability there, just putting a super move on Scott Ernie. Daryl Whitmore came in starting at free safety for West Virginia, and there has not been a problem with his play all season long. You would think, Gar, that through the course of a season it would have to become learning and learning and learning, but he has become quite comfortable with the West Virginia defense. Dick Anderson's club trailing it six to nothing. Add to that the fact that his third leading receiver, Brett Mersola, is still on the ground and in pain. Don I mean, Nealon will use the extra time to talk things over with his kick team. You talk about starting the tempo out of a football game. I mean, a big hit and an interception on one play. Head coach Don Nealon has had great success against the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. And speaking of success, he's had it all season long as his club comes into this game with a 9-0 record. I think this defense is going to be fired up all day, Tony, with the allegations that number 32, James Can, made in the newspaper yesterday about the West Virginia defense, saying that they're no better than Army. I mean, these kids are competitors. They had that Xerox copy distributed throughout the defense yesterday, and they're going to be after Rutgers today. As you see there, with the interception by Whitmore, the Mountaineers now have 17 on the season and uh, are in reach of the team record of 24. There's Bob Shaw in the yellow jacket down there talking with his defense. The Mountaineer defense yet to get onto the field here today. Brett Mersola now being walked off the field. Has one arm underneath him from one of the training people, but he seems to be okay. Took a hard shot there from Theron Ellis. Charlie Bauman going after his 49th extra point of the season. He's 48 out of 50. Senior from Erie, Pennsylvania, looking to give West Virginia a 7-0 lead. And it is perfect. The Mountaineers lead it 7-0 with 13 minutes and 56 seconds to go here in the first quarter of play. With a few words on performance. How do I know so much about Caterpillar equipment from Walker Machinery? Well, I put a few hours on one. On my farm, I do a lot of work that might stop anything else. But there's nothing that cat loader can't do. So if you're ever in Hedgesville, stop by my farm. Just look for the flattest piece of land around. Walker Machinery, your Caterpillar dealer. Well, Charlie Bauman will kick it off for the second time this afternoon. The Mountaineers capitalizing on Rutgers' first possession as Daryl Whitmore returns the ball off an interception for a touchdown, and Bauman ready to put it back into play. That really took the wind out of Rutgers' sails, that one play, Tony. Eric Young back deep to return along with Allen of Rutgers, and he'll start it off from the seven-yard line. Big hole. Here he comes. He'll go all the way for a touchdown. An incredible start to this football game. Ron Allen goes coast to coast on a 92-yard touchdown run, and Rutgers answers right back. Obviously, they filled their win they're sailing back up a wind on that one play again. West Virginia special teams breaking down a little bit. Mountaineers have had problems with kickoff returns all season long. 
But that's the first time they've given one up for a touchdown. You'll remember, John, back in the East Carolina game, they gave up a 60-yard-plus return to the Pirates' Junior Robinson, and they had problems in the second game of the season against Cal State Fullerton. Notice what happened, Tony, when, when this defensive coverage is coming down. One player goes to the left, the other player goes to the right, and a big seam just creates. Extra point good by Carmen Sclafani, and we're tied up at 7-all. 13 minutes and 43 seconds to go here in the first quarter of play. So an interesting contest here, John Garcia, as both clubs score early. This copyrighted broadcast authorized under broadcasting rights granted by West Virginia University through its Mountaineer Sports Network solely for the entertainment of our viewing audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the description and accounts of this game without the express written permission of the Mountaineer Sports Network is prohibited. The announcers on this broadcast employed by the Mountaineer Sports Network and references the products made by the announcers are paid commercial messages. Tony, a total of five plays and two touchdowns. How much more excitement can you have? Well, as far as Don Nealon's concerned, he doesn't want any more excitement. <laughs> There's already 14 points on the board, and Major Harris hasn't even stepped on the field yet. An interception for a touchdown and a kickoff return for a touchdown as Rutgers and West Virginia tie it up once again. That tells you how important the role of special teams is in college football. Here, uh, West Virginia comes out with great defense, puts seven points on the board. We have a special teams breakdown. Rutgers is right back in this thing. Carmen Sclafani will kick it off for Rutgers. Eugene Napoleon is back deep. There's a look at Sclafani. Walked on this Rutgers program and has now taken over their kickoff duties and their field goal kicking. Well, let's see here, John. Five plays, two scores. What could happen here? It will be Eugene Napoleon. Bobbles it up, and now Lamont takes over. Jamie Lamont, success up the middle, brings it up to the 29-yard line as a penalty marker falls on the play. Rich Humphreys making the stop there on Jamie Lamont. So a miscue on the kickoff between Eugene Napoleon and Lamont. They spot the ball on the 29 and now the penalty. So West Virginia will march back on the holding call. a 10-yard penalty on the play as they'll spot it back at the 19. So Major Harris and the West Virginia Mountaineers will take over. West Virginia's offense averaging 45 points a game this season, racking up yards, 495 yards of total offense per game. That's good for sixth in the nation. Linus Bell and Calvin Phillips lining up as receivers on first down and 10. That's Phillips in motion. A.B. Brown has the first carry of the afternoon for the Mountaineers. Pickup of four on the play is Doug Kokowski, the inside linebacker, made the initial hit. Kokowski did a real nice job that time, Tony, flowing to the football. He's a converted middle guard, and he missed the entire 1987 season with a knee injury. He's a big guy in that middle linebacker slot. Major Harris had 304 yards of total offense against the Scarlet Knights a year ago. A.B. Brown up ahead to the 28-yard line. That'll bring up third down and short. Homecoming day here for Anthony Brown. He's a native of Salem, New Jersey, one of 14 West Virginia players from the state of New Jersey. As we get a good look there at A.B. Brown, comes into the game with 699 yards of offense this season for the Mountaineers. With this population base in the state of New Jersey, there's an awful lot of major college football players that come out of here. Third down and one. And again, it's A.B. Brown. First down, West Virginia. Brown brings it over the 30-yard line. Anthony Brown carrying. <laughs> making the stop for Rutgers. A real nice job by the West Virginia offensive line. We're just playing power football, toss sweep into the boundary and get after him. 
Reggie Rember comes out of the game for West Virginia. Granis Bell lines up as a receiver out to the left. Jamie Lamont to the right. Now Lamont in motion. And Major looking for his first pass attempt of the afternoon, and they've got him. George Bankos, the defensive tackle, number 71, coming over to sack Major Harris. Good penetration there by the Rutgers front line. Steve Tompkins, Carter Giles, and George Bankos, the down lineman of the 3-4 alignment that Rutgers uses. Bankos, he's the strongest player on the Rutgers team. We're going to see a lot of him in the West Virginia defense offensive backfield this week. Loss of six yards on the play, second down and 16. And it's Craig Taylor. Taylor over the 30-yard line, up ahead to the 31. Doug Kokowski in on the stop. Picks up six on the play. That'll bring up third down and 10. Craig Taylor missing last week's game with an injury. Aaron Evans came in and did a great job. This week, Aaron Evans is home with a flu, and Craig Taylor's in there. Mountaineers have had great success this season, John, on third down conversion, hitting over 50%. Harris with plenty of time. There comes the major on the run. He's got the first down. Harris down to the 48-yard line. West Virginia's second first down of the afternoon. Pat Udovich, number 91, the inside linebacker, finally caught up there with Harris, but not before a 17-yard pickup by the major. Major just doing an outstanding job. What he does best, sitting in that pocket, and what happens when th those defensive linemen decide to go left or right, it creates a big seam. Here, Major Harris sees the seam and takes advantage of it. He he's averaging about 4.8 yards a carry. Showing no ill effects of a bruised hip that kept him out of the final quarter and a half a week ago against Cincinnati. First down and 10, and A.B. Brown picks up a couple as he marches it into Rutgers territory. This Rutgers team on defense, John has been struggling over the last three weeks. They have lost their last three games to Army, Temple, and to Pittsburgh, and in the process have given up an average of 30 points a game in their last three outings. They've also given up over 400 yards of total offense per game. Second down and seven. Major on the option. And a good job there by the Scarlet Knights as George Bankos came over to Close it down. Number 71, George Bankos read the option play very well. The Scarlet Knights have had problems against teams that play option football. They've met up with several of them this season, Syracuse, Vanderbilt, and Army. The offensive staff coming out with the sprint draw and the toss sweep into the boundary, a little bit of drop back pass. Now they throw in the option. Rutgers defense coordinator has to be a little bit leery. Third down and seven. Harris looking for Granis Bell. Bell with the catch. And depending on the spot, West Virginia should have the first down. An eight-yard pickup on the play. That's a first down for the Mountaineers. Ivan Mays coming over to make the stop. So West Virginia now marching on the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. This is the first possession of the afternoon for the Mountaineers. Yes, the score is 7-7, seven to seven, but it's the first possession for the Mountaineers. They've picked up three first downs. Craig Taylor and A.B. Brown in the backfield for the Mountaineers. And it goes to Craig Taylor. Taylor busting it ahead down to the 36-yard line. Taylor, like A.B. Brown, comes from the state of New Jersey. He's a native of Linden, and actually, Linden is a lot closer than Salem, where Brown comes from. So Craig Taylor's got many a fan and friend here at the Meadowlands this afternoon four-yard pickup. That'll bring up second down and six. And here comes the major. Beautiful move by Harris as he spins down to the 25. Tim Lester, number 98, finally wraps up the major, but John, I think last week's bruised hip did not seem to bother Major Harris at all. He's up, he's flying, and he's running wild early. An 11-yard pickup for Harris, first down for West Virginia. Major with his ability to be that drop-back passer, run that option. Let's not be surprised if we see that option freeze play. 
Brandis Bell lining up as a receiver out to the right. Calvin Phillips to the near side. And A.B. Brown with the carry. Brown splitting down inside to the 15-yard line. Nine-yard pickup on the play, and that'll bring up second down and one. West Virginia is pounding the ball down on Rutgers. Vaughn McCoy and Tim Lester make the stop here on Anthony Brown, the senior from Salem, New Jersey, who comes into the game with 699 yards of total offense so far this afternoon. 24 yards for Anthony on six carries. West Virginia just lining up and say, okay, boys, here we come. We're going to blow you off the football, and that's exactly what they're doing. Bell lining up wide out to the left-hand side, and they go to Craig Taylor, a hole for Taylor, and he's met there as he reaches over the 10-yard line. Right quarterback, Glenn Miller, and the free safety, Vaughn McCoy, make the stop on Craig Taylor. Craig, as you can see, a tremendous season, rushing the ball with five yards per carry, but he's doing a tremendous job as well, blocking for the likes of Anthony Brown and Andre Johnson. He really worked on his blocking skills this past spring and, and had greatly improved them. Dick Anderson looks on at a defense that is really bending here. On the carry by Taylor, it's a first down and goal situation. Brown with a block from Taylor. Down to the eight yard line. That'll bring up second down and goal from the eight. As again, Vaughn McCoy and Pat Udovich there to make the stop. The Mountaineers have marched this ball on Rutgers on the ground. Harris has thrown just once, and that was an eight-yard completion for a first down to Granis Bell. This really puts you in a, a sticky situation, Tony. It's second down with the ball on the nine-yard line, and you don't have a whole lot of room to work there offensively. Adrian Moss in at the tight end for the Mountaineers. Rembert comes in motion. On the option, Harris with the hole. Harris, right down to the one yard line. Vaughn McCoy held back Major Harris, but Major was as close as you can. Look at that spot down there, John, as close as you can be without scoring. Major did a real good job that time stretching that defense and creating that seam and then he has the ability to cut that ball up on a 90 degree angle. Double tight end formation for West Virginia. Rico Tyler lining up as a wing back. Craig Taylor, ball is loose and Rutgers has recovered. The Mountaineers drive on Rutgers one yard away, the ball pops loose, and the Scarlet Knights hold off the Mountaineers. 7-7, seven, seven, we'll be back. Rutgers taking over, first down and 10 from the one-yard line as West Virginia coughs up the football on their way in for a score. Chris Herring makes the stop on Mike Body. Tremendously interesting game so far for the Mountaineers. Game began with an interception return for a touchdown for West Virginia. Then they gave up a 92-yard touchdown run. We're at 7-7. Five minutes and 51 seconds to go here in the first quarter of play. West Virginia fumbling on their way in. On second down, they go to body again, and West Virginia's defense is there. Body breaking away from Theron Ellis. And a tremendous effort brings it ahead to the six-yard line. Chris Herring finally made the stop on Mike Body. Mike Body's a good, strong back. He's averaging about 4.8 yards a carry. Theron does a, an absolutely super job wrapping him up. But this kid's a good, strong back. Wrap him up, grab jersey, hold on to anything, bring him down. Tremendous sign there, John, that you've got to go for the legs rather than trying to arm tackle. Third down and four. Ernie's in trouble. That'll be an incompletion, and West Virginia will force the Scarlet Knights into a punting situation. Chris Parker in on the pursuit of Scott Ernie, and he almost had him there for the safety, but Ernie smartly got the ball away. 
Chris Parker, the big guy, has five tackles for a loss this year. Great pressure. Makes Ernie throw the football away. West Virginia defense rising to the occasion again, Tony. Brannis Bell is back deep, waiting at midfield. Matt O'Connell, number six, is the punter. And John Bean so hemmed in, he's not going to have the normal distance coming back on that ball. Bad punt by O'Connell. Bell from the 50. Down to the 46-yard line. So West Virginia's offense will take over inside Rutgers territory. The punt carries 45 yards thanks to a comfortable Rutgers bounce. 7-7, we'll be back. Well, John, you know, one of the goals that the West Virginia defense has each game is to hold off the opposing team's offense and force them on a punt to put the ball on their side of the field, meaning from anywhere in the 50-yard line area in. They have done that every game this season at least twice, and they're doing it right here. The West Virginia defense holding off the Rutgers Scarlet Knights as they begin to drive from their one-yard line, and now the Mountaineers will take over at the Rutgers 46. That's right, Tony, and, and not only that, but the three plays and out is the big thing. Get your offense that ball and let them have the time of possession. Don't let your opponent drive the football and use up that clock. Dick Anderson looks on and apparently concerned as another Rutgers player is injured. Brett Mersola was injured and stayed down for quite some time on the game's opening series, and now another of the Scarlet Knight players is being helped off the field. Rutgers can ill afford any injuries they come into this game missing three of their defensive starters. Mike Pergolizzi is the injured man, number 44. And it was Pergolizzi who came up with the fumble recovery as West Virginia was trying to score inside the Rutgers goal line. The ball popped loose off the hands of Craig Taylor. You know, Brannis Bell has done a good job catching those punts, and that's really something that's very difficult standing back there on an island all by yourself you're looking up in the air and here comes those red shirts and then not only after you catch the football you have to put a move and a juke and beat one per one or two people he's done a super job all year it's major time once again the mountaineers averaging five yards per play on their first 15 of the game but still have not come up with an offensive touchdown first and ten they go right back to craig taylor Taylor downed at the 42-yard line. That'll be a five-yard pickup as Steve Tompkins and Doug Kokowski make the stop. I think that bodes well for Don Nealon and his staff. I mean, Craig drove that football all the way down that field, fumbled it, and then they turn around and give him that ball on that opening drive again to build his confidence back up. Good job, Don. Mountaineers have scored over 50 points four times this season. In fact, they've done it three games in a row. A.B. Brown on second down with a nice block from Craig Taylor. A.B. Brown chased out at the 35-yard line. That's a first down for the Mountaineers. Right cornerback, Glenn Miller, coming over to make the stop. Seven-yard pickup for Anthony Brown. So provided West Virginia can hold on to the football, John, they seem to be able to move it with relative ease. You know, West Virginia has been struggling defensively against the rush with an average of giving up 241 yards a game and 182 yards passing. So we should be able to put some points on the board today. Reggie Rembert lining up as a receiver far out to the right. The tight end Keith Wynn in a slot position. And again, they go to A.B. Brown. Brown with a hole inside the 30-yard line. A great job that time by Craig Taylor again. I mean, he filled up on that sprint draw and really unloaded. Sunk those hips and really rolled into that block. Five-yard pickup, second down and five. And Anthony Brown now with 38 yards on nine carries. Brown with 38 of West Virginia's 96 yards of offense. Harris on the option. Brown. Picks up a yard or two on the play. That toss a little bit behind A.B. Brown, Darren Sellers. Left cornerback putting the move on A.B. Brown. Brown came into the season saying, I would like to have 1,300 yards. Well, unfortunately, he won't reach that 
mark, but he could have a shot at a 1,000-yard season. Comes into this game with 699. Third down situation for the Mountaineers. Third down and four. They're three of three so far on third down. Brown off the block from Craig Taylor will not have it. The Rutgers defense holds as number two, Glenn Miller, and number 12, Vaughn McCoy make the stop on Anthony Brown, and it's Charlie Bauman time for West Virginia. The thing that hurt that play that time, Tony, number 79, Doug Kokoski, the middle linebacker, got way up the field and forced A.B. to take a little dip and give up a little bit of ground and couldn't get that extra yard. Charlie Bauman, five of six from 40 yards and farther this season. This is a 44-yard attempt by Bauman. It is no good. Off to the left. Charlie Bauman missing from 44 yards away. And we stay at 7-7 with two minutes and 49 seconds to go here in the first quarter of action. Well, John, it's the classic bend but not break defense of Rutgers that we're seeing so far. The Mountaineers marching it all the way down to the one-yard line, failing to score, and on a third down and four, they hold there. They bent but did not break. Scott Blanche, the tight end, lining up on the right side. And Mike Body make it James Can, the ball carrier, and Ronaldo Turnbull is there to make the hit. James Can, junior out of West Nyack, New York, comes into the ball game with 357 yards. He's the number two man in the offensive backfield for Rutgers. Mike Body is the leading round gainer. James Can is the number two man, and Can is the guy that made some comments that infuriated the West Virginia defensive players. Can quoted to say that West Virginia's defense isn't all that impressive. Compared them to the Army defense, and the Mountaineers didn't take too kindly to that. Here's Mike Body. Strong, hard runner. Closes in on the 30-yard line to come towards the two-minute mark of the first quarter. Really not a, a very smart thing to say for Mr. Camp, particularly when you're a running back, why add fuel to the fire? Teams are just looking for something to fire themselves up with, and they got something there. <laughs> Rutgers is 0 for 2 on third down plays. Ernie, with plenty of time, going deep. Willie Edwards on the coverage, almost comes up with the pickoff. Looking for Randy Jackson, number 83, and Willie Edwards was with him stride for stride, and Willie Edwards almost had himself a picture-perfect interception from over the shoulder. Super job by Willie Edwards. Watch this throw by Scott Ernie. This guy can be a big timer. He un really unleashes that ball perfectly on stride. Very well played by Willie. Matt O'Connell is back to punt for Rutgers. And I want to apologize to Willie's grandmother. He's not a native of Morgantown. He moved to Morgantown when he was a junior in high school. He's from North Carolina. O'Connell had a 45-yarder on his first punt. Nice high spiraling kick here. There will be no return as Granis Bell watches it go out of bounds. And they'll spot the ball at the 38-yard line. So the Mountaineer offense, again, will have good field position. They'll take it over first and 10 from the 38-yard line. One minute and 20 seconds to go here in the first quarter of action. And for all of you Mountaineer fans watching in on WCHS TV8 in Charleston, this Bud's for you. Well, the WVU offense 0 for 2 on possession so far in the ball game. They've been marching it very well, picking up 99 yards on 20 plays, but still have not come up with points. On first and ten, Major has his man, Keith Wynn, but they'll rule it incomplete. The official on the play claiming that Wynn trapped the ball. Pat Udovich, the inside linebacker, on the coverage. Tony, you and I watched the Syracuse Rutgers game last night, and Syracuse really utilized that tight end, particularly in his pass routes. We can anticipate West Virginia utilizing their tight ends. Wynn has been lining up uh, several times in the slot position. So we'll watch that as the game goes on. Second down and 10. And the delay goes to A.B. Brown. 
Tim Lester makes the stop on Brown. He'll spot it on the 43-yard line. One minute to go here in the first quarter of play. Five-yard pickup, bringing up third down and five. As Don Nealon sends in the play with receiver Jamie Lamont. Tony, what the receiver will tell Major is really basically very simple. Each formation has a color, whether it be red or white or black or gray. He'll say red 54, red 54. Major will go in and call the play. Basically very simple. Harris on third down. Reggie Rembert, the intended receiver. And the Mountaineers will be forced to punt Doug Kokowski on the coverage for the Scarlet Knights. Ball went off the fingertips there of Reggie Rembert. Bit high on the play. Reggie with that blazing speed, a 4-3-40. And I can guarantee you there aren't too many people in the country with that kind of speed. Lance Carrion on for his first punt of the afternoon. Rutgers sending back two return men. And it is Brett Snyder on the return. Penalty flags fly on the play. Snyder brings it up to the 34-yard line. Keith Wynn made the stop for the Mountaineers. We've got three flags down. Looks like most definitely a clip on number 75, John Stroya, for the Mountaineers. The Rutgers player just didn't get his head across enough. 39-yard punt by Lance Carrion. And now they'll mark off the penalty. We have clipping on the return team. It'll be first down, Rutgers ball. Second penalty of the ball game against West Virginia. Our referee this afternoon, John Soffey. So 21 seconds to go here in the first quarter of play. A game that began bang, bang with two quick scores. But since that time, West Virginia's offense and the Rutgers offense have been forced into punts. Charlie Bauman missing a 44-yard field goal attempt. And the Mountaineers fumbling one away as they were crossing over the goal line at the one-yard line. Scott Ernie to throw on first down. Pressure is on. The dump pass to Mike Body. They set up the screen. And Body is brought down by Chris Herring. First down for Rutgers. David Lockwood and Herring making the stop. Clock stops now with 13 seconds to go in the first quarter. Great call by Dick Anderson and the offensive staff there. One play that can beat a very aggressive defense is the screen. Good job by Mike Body that time getting that ball up the field. 19th catch of the season for Mike Body. He had a big 57-yarder against Penn State this year on a draw play, very similar to the pit play with A.B. Brown. That was the first first down of the game for Rutgers. And Ernie looking for more on first down. Over the middle, it's intercepted by Bo Orlando. West Virginia will take the football over. As we head into the second quarter of play, Bo Orlando, after a two-week absence because of an injury, comes away with his third interception of the season. The pass intended there for the tight end, James Jenkins, and Orlando scoops it right up. Big play that time by Bo. West Virginia in his own coverage. The strong safety just sitting in there. Super play for this guy after coming back from those injuries. A great athletic ability, Tony. He runs a 3.89 shuttle run, which was the fastest on the team. Mountaineers, first and 10 from the 37-yard line of Rutgers. A.B. Brown with a hole up the middle. Close to that first down marker as the first quarter of play comes to an end. We'll switch sides of the field. West Virginia marching on the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Head into the second quarter of play. West Virginia racking up 114 yards of offense in the first quarter of play. Rutgers held to just 22. And add to the fact that Rutgers quarterback Scott Ernie threw away two interceptions. The first interception returned by Darrell Whitmore for the Mountaineers touchdown. And now Bo Orlando's interception has given the Mountaineer offense excellent field position. First down and 10 from the Scarlet Knight 27-yard line. Craig Taylor hemmed in and thrown back at the 25. 
Darren Sellers makes the stop on number 20, Craig Taylor. A couple of yards on the play, and that'll bring up second down and eight. Taylor missed last week's game with an injury against Cincinnati, stayed back in Morgantown, and he was replaced by Aaron Evans, who did a very good job. Well, this afternoon, Aaron Evans not making the trip for the Mountaineers because of a flu virus, and so Craig Taylor has come back in. Rembert in motion on second down. And it's Anthony Brown who had 56 yards in the first quarter, and the running room is tough. He'll lose one there. Again, the Rutgers defense tightening up with this ball inside the 30-yard line. That time, Reggie Rembert just kind of missed that crackback block a little bit and couldn't seal off that perimeter. Pat Udovich, watch him, number 91, coming up to make the stop, an inside linebacker. They close it off, and Yudovich comes up and makes the hit. You don't have a lot of room to run there between the hash and the numbers, and there's not a lot of room for seams. You've got to get that ball up the field. Mountaineers, three of five on third down attempts. Third down and eight. Harris has the ball nearly picked off by John Blanton. Looking for Grannis Bell, and it was a poorly thrown ball by Harris. And the Mountaineers will try for their second field goal of the afternoon. Charlie Bauman missing from 44 yards away on his first attempt. Mountaineers very lucky that time. And this will be a 43-yarder. So Bauman missed from 44, and now a 43-yard attempt. Definitely in his range. Charlie's kick. Again, no good. Off to the left. So Charlie Bauman uncharacteristically Misses two field goals, definitely in his range. He came into the game 17 of 20 in field goal attempts. And he's 0 for 2 here this afternoon. So again, the Rutgers defense bends but does not break. And it's a 7-7 game with 14 minutes and 9 seconds to go here in the first half of play. Charlie's all, coming into this game was also fourth in the country in scoring with 11.1 .1 points per game. He's had a great year up till today. He'll pull through it. Scott Ernie working himself out of a shade. Ernie with Turnbull after him. And they've got him. An outstanding job by Ronaldo that time. He fought off that chop block by that running back and prevented Ernie from getting outside. Not only did he, he seal that perimeter off, he chased the quarterback down and made the tackle. Ernie is not a running quarterback by any stretch of the imagination. Comes into the game with 32 carries for 33 yards. So normally, when he runs, it's out of fright and desperation. <laughs> Particularly when he sees uh, Mr. Turnbull chasing him down. Turnbull so far today has been doing a good job on the pressure. Up the middle comes James Can. Up ahead to the 34-yard line. Seven-yard pickup, Bo Orlando and Theron Ellis making the stop. And we've got another Rutgers player injured. This will be the third one of the ball game. They've already had to take two of the Rutgers players off the field. Pergo Lizzi, the inside linebacker, who was injured in the first quarter of action, will not return with a right knee injury. Mr. Canna, a very good inside runner. He's a, with his ability to pick out those seams. He's not a great getaway runner because he doesn't have that blazing speed, but he's good between tackle and tackle. Injured man is James Jenkins. Tight end for the Scarlet Knights, and he seems to be okay. 13 minutes and 10 seconds to go here in the half. Tied up at 7-all. And the Scarlet Knights will be facing a third down and two as we resume play. A week ago, in a loss to Pittsburgh, Rutgers was 0 for 6 in third down conversion attempts. So far here today, 0 for 2. Tyrone McQueen and Eric Young lining up as receivers to the left. And Ernie to throw on third down. Ernie's got the room. And he's got the first down as Bo Orlando makes the hit along with Chris Herring. But Scott Ernie wisely had the hole there. Picks up five yards on the play. And the Scarlet Knights have the first down as they spot the ball on the 39-yard line. 
Ronaldo fighting off that chop block. He's responsible for contain. A nice job by Chris Herring coming up. He really puts a good tackle on him. So the Scarlet Knights with just their second first down of the ball game. And motion on the left side of that line. Ronaldo Turnbull popping off. Was he drawn off? That is the question. Mountaineers have been penalized twice so far in the ball game. That's a very difficult situation to be in, Tony, particularly with an experienced quarterback because he'll, he'll vocalize his cadence to draw that guy offside. It'll be offsides against West Virginia, a five-yard penalty. Dead ball foul, contact foul by the defense. Go first. Sometimes that center will just move that ball just a tiny bit where the official can't see it, but that middle guard and those defensive linemen can see it. They play a little bit of tricks in there sometimes. First down and five. And they go to James Can. He's met there by Jim Gray, the nose guard for the Mountaineers, and Chris Herring. Herring all over the field so far in this one. He's West Virginia's leading tackler coming into the game with 102 tackles. Number 49, Chris Herring, just having a tremendous season. He also, Tony, has two sacks, three tackles for a loss, two interceptions, two fumble recoveries, and a pass block. I mean, he's about a smorgasbord of a defensive player. He's doing it all. You're right. Four-yard pickup on the play. That'll bring up second down and one. James Jenkins, who was helped off the field a few plays ago, back in the lineup for the Scarlet Knights. And Rutgers has another first down as they move the ball into West Virginia territory. Mike Body on the carry. Ronaldo Turnbull and Jim Gray coming over to make the stop. This has turned into an interesting football game, Tony. The first quarter, West Virginia defense shutting down Rutgers offense. Now Rutgers offense able to uh, generate a little bit of offense. Scott Ernie, who's got school records and attempts, completions and yards, not having a tremendous throwing afternoon so far. He's one of five. And again, they go to body, but this time Jim Gray wraps him up and Chris Herring and Robert Pickett bring him down. Number 49, Chris Herring, who comes into the game with 32 more tackles than any other defensive player on the Mountaineers. As mentioned, 102 stops on the season. Deron Ellis in second place with tackles. He's got 69. This guy has a great attitude and work habits. Lives, lives in the weight room. And if you want to be a major college football player, that's where you have to live, Tony, in that offseason. Second down and 10. There was no gain there on the carry by Body. Ernie again goes to Body, and again, the West Virginia defense closes up quickly. Brings the ball over the 45 yard line. Bo Orlando and Jim Gray making the stop. So the ankle injury that kept Orlando out for two weeks seems to have healed itself. Orlando now will take himself out of the lineup as Chris Parker and Lawrence Drumgool will come in. Orlando not noticeably limping, but he took himself out of the ball game. Third down and four. Rutgers is one of three on third down plays. Ernie on the rollout. Has his man, Eric Young, first down for the Scarlet Knights as Daryl Whitmore brings down Eric Young. A senior from New Brunswick, New Jersey, with his first catch of the afternoon. He's the Rutgers' leading receiver. An 11-yard pickup there as the Scarlet Knights start to move against the West Virginia defense. West Virginia loses contain, and they have nobody pressuring the quarterback. Ernie just has all day out there to either run that ball or to dump it off. That time, he chooses to dump it off, and they get the first down. Nine minutes and 43 seconds to go here in the second quarter of play. A tied ball game at 7-all. Body in the backfield. And there they go to him. Up the middle, he brings it over the 30-yard line. Chris Herring in to make the hit. This is a pretty productive drive for Rutgers. I remember the, the off week for West Virginia. Rutgers played Boston College. Rutgers had a 9-minute and 30-second drive for, against Boston College. They're a pretty consistent football team. A week ago, they had the ball taken away from them, literally, as Pittsburgh had 43 minutes on offense, and Rutgers with just 17. 
but only managed 10 points in the game. There's James Can. A hole for James Can as he brings it down to the 20 yard line. Scarlet Knight fans on their feet here at Giant Stadium as Bo Orlando and Chris Herring bring down number 32, James Can. So the Mountaineer defense now doing their version of a bend. Now let's see if they will break. The Rutgers defense has been marching backwards, but they have been able to hold when needed against West Virginia. Tyrone McQueen lines up as a receiver out to the left. And now the officials stop play. Eight minutes and 37 seconds to go here in the first half. Rutgers on first down and 10. And it's James Can. He is met there by Robert Pickett. A big hit by the wicked Pickett, number 45. Senior out of Miami, Florida, came flying in on the play, a one-yard loss. That'll bring up second down and 11. Great effort here, John. A great hit. Notice how he, how he rolls those hips, Tony, on impact and puts the helmet right on him. Great job by Robert Pickett. He's really come on the latter part of this year. He started out a little bit slow, but he's really come on. Captain also. Second down and 11. Randy Jackson as a receiver to the near side. And they go on a counter play to body. Pat Marlette over to make the stop after a couple of yard pickup. So Rutgers showed the pass there, but kept it on the ground as body. Brings it ahead. This Rutgers team, Tony, has a nucleus of a very good football team. They went into State College and played very well. It's just that their depth is their major problem. The, the more confidence that's, that this team gets, the longer it's going to be for West Virginia to hang in there. So Maryland at 14 to nothing, and then to Cincinnati a week ago by three points. Well, Rutgers has taken the lead here, 10 to 7. With seven minutes and six seconds to go in the first half of play as Carmen Sclafani kicks a 35-yard field goal, capping off a 14-play drive for the Scarlet Knights. Sclafani now ready to kick the ball off. Eugene Napoleon is the deep man for West Virginia. And it's taken by the up man. This is Jeff Price. And the big guy goes down at the 28-yard line. That's Price's fourth return of the season, believe it or not. Number 51, Jeff Price. He's got more kickoff returns this season than Jamie Lamont or Andre Johnson. <laughs> he was like a bull in a china shop that time. The ball just seems to conveniently head towards Jeff Price. Normally he does a good job there, but that time he got up a little bit too high and got clipped under. All right, let's see what the West Virginia offense can do here. Out near offense is... Not put any points on the board yet. First down, Harris throws. He's got his man, Granis Barrett. And Granis breaks free. And he'll be downed at the 43 and a half yard line. First down, West Virginia as the Mountaineers come out throwing. Rusty Mays and Glenn Miller make the stop on Grantis Bell. That was a very nice timing pattern. A three-step drop by Major Harris. He puts the ball right on the money that time, right on the out pattern. Good job by Granis Bell here. A little shake and bake and gets a few extra yards. First down and 10. And the ball carrier is under Johnson inside Rutgers territory. Down to the 48 as Andre Johnson comes into the game for his first carry. Mike Bouchard makes the stop from his inside linebacker spot. Andre Johnson, who is now just 46 yards away from becoming the school's fourth all-time leading rusher, Garrett Ford currently holds that mark. Pickup of eight there by Undra. Second down and two. Possible pass situation, John. There's the option freeze. Harris in pressure. Fires for Reggie Rembert. Touchdown, West Virginia. Touchdown number seven of the season for Reggie Rembert. A 48-yard strike. Major Harris gets creamed here as he releases the ball by number 98, Tim Lester. 
but he got it away just in time to Reggie Rembert. How many times have we seen this play go for six all year, Tony? A super job by Major Harris and Reggie Rembert. Charlie Bauman with an extra point attempt. This one is good, and West Virginia comes right back to take a 14 to 10 lead with six minutes and 10 seconds to go here in the first half of play. Well, John, take a look at that last touchdown play. Reggie Rembert is six feet, six inches tall. The right cornerback on the coverage, Glenn Miller, is just five feet eight. So provided that Major Harris can get the ball high enough, Rembert certainly will be able to make the catch. The thing that impresses the coaching staff about Reggie is, hey, they say this guy is not just a track star playing a football. He'll go across that middle and catch that thing, not like a lot of track stars who just run fast. 21st reception of the season for Rembert, and seven of the 21 have gone for touchdowns. So he's 33%. How do you stop that play? I mean, West Virginia runs the option. You're that free safety stand down there, and you know that you have to get in there on that pitch or, or have the quarterback on that option, and then all of a sudden, Big Reggie comes flying down the field with that 4-3-40 speed. Charlie Bauman will come on to kick it off. The Mountaineers giving up a 92-yard kickoff return in the first quarter of play as Ron Allen ran it back for a touchdown. So the kickoff return unit, a concerned area as far as West Virginia's football team goes. I think it shows the maturity of this West Virginia team. I mean, here they are down a few points, and they just say, oh, well, we've got to go out and score another touchdown and get back in this game again. That's exactly what they did. Three plays on the drive, covering 72 yards. We mentioned that was Rembert's seventh touchdown catch of the season. Major Harris now with 13 touchdown passes. Charlie Bauman's kickoff taken by Eric Young at the 13-yard line. Young up the middle. He's got great speed, but Teddy Kester drags him down over the 35-yard line. Number 22, Eric Young, the all-time kickoff return lead man for Rutgers. Comes into the game with a 22-yard average on kickoff returns. He only needs nine receptions coming into this game to break the uh, reception record of 49 in one season. They'll spot the ball on the 36-yard line as Scott Ernie brings the play in from the sideline. So far today, Scott Ernie two of seven for 24 yards. So not a big afternoon so far for Scott Ernie. And the Knights to throw on first down. Ernie with plenty of time intended over there for Tyrone McQueen. David Lockwood on the coverage for West Virginia. McQueen's an interesting story, number five for the Scarlet Knights. He's second on the team in receptions. He came to Rutgers as a walk-on. Earned himself a spot and now has taken over as the team's second leading receiver. He's out of Rahway, New Jersey. That last play was played very well by number 93, Dale Jackson, preventing Ernie from getting to the outside and forcing the bad throw. Good job, Dale. Rutgers showing a double tight end formation. Single man in the backfield is Mike Body on second down and 10. And they go to Mike Body with a big hole. Preston Waters rides him out of bounds. That'll be a first down for the Scarlet Knights. Nice carry there by Mike Body. 13-yard pickup for the junior from Link, Ronkonkomo, New York. They slip in the draw there on the West Virginia defense. A little bit of holding there, maybe on number nine, not 61, Mike Fox. Bring the ball up to the 48-yard line. Rutgers looking to bring the ball in to West Virginia territory. Came away with a field goal on their last possession. Body again. Scott Summits there to take him down by the toes. Number 31, Mike Body, leading ground gain of this season for the Scarlet Knights. Coming into the year, he said, one of my big favorites, one of my big likes, is playing at Beaver Stadium, the home of the Penn State Nittany Lions. Well, he certainly meant it, because earlier this season, it was Mike Body who went into the Penn State game, came away with a 57-yard run 
for a touchdown, and that provided the game-winning points as Rutgers knocked off Penn State at Beaver Stadium. Second down and seven. And it's Ernie on a nice fake. Here he comes. Met there by Bo Orlando and Daryl Whitmore right at the first down marker. Beautiful play fake there. Ernie paid the price for that naked bootleg that time with Daryl Whitmore really come up and laying the hammer to him. Under five minutes to go here in the first half. West Virginia 14 and Rutgers 10. Tyrone McQueen and Eric Young lining up as receivers to the left side. Mike Body is the single man in the backfield. And it's Body on the carry. Looks as though that he's got the first down. Robert Pickett and Theron Ellis make the stop. He needed just about a half a yard, and he's got it. First down for the Scarlet Knights, and that's their seventh of the ball game. So both teams having success moving the football, John. Yes, coming into this game, uh, well, initially the beginning of the season, Rutgers moved the ball very well, but they kind of lost a little bit of enthusiasm with those three losses. On first down and 10, Scott Ernie looks to throw. Has the time intended over there for Brett Mersola. David Lockwood on the coverage. Artisan Scarlet Knight fans looking for an interference call, but the referee indicates that the ball was uncatchable. It was high and over the head there of number 81, Brett Mersola. Senior out of Burbank, California. One of three Californians on the Rutgers team. He was also a junior college All-American. He was a great player. Junior college All-American caught a junior college national record, 91 passes. He initially enrolled at uh, Colorado, but then later transferred. Second down and 10, and Rutgers sends out three receivers to the left. Mike Body is the ball carrier as a penalty flag is down on the play. There was motion there on the West Virginia defensive front prior to the snap. The Rutgers will probably be given the choice of taking the play or the penalty. Three minutes and 54 seconds to go. Second quarter of play, the Scarlet Knights trail by four points. Dal Jackson coming off the field for West Virginia. They're off sides. Off sides on the defense. So they'll take the run by Mike Body, a nine yard pickup. If they had taken the penalty, it would have just been a five yarder. So that'll bring up third down and one. Ball spotted on the 32 yard line in West Virginia territory. James Can and Mike Body in the backfield. And this is Body, and he is hit and dropped back at the line of scrimmage. Bo Orlando, West Virginia's strong safety, coming under to make the play on Mike Body. And Bo is definitely back. Scarlet Knights will be short of the first down. Fourth down and about a long yard and a half. I'd be surprised if Dick Anderson didn't go for this. I mean, he has nothing to lose. And Rutgers is going to take a timeout. Three minutes and five seconds to go here in the half. Fourth down and a long one. Facing the Scarlet Knights. We'll be back to see what happens. West Virginia down and yard and a half away. West Virginia's defense looks to hold back the Scarlet Knights. Rutgers trailing it by four points, and the crowd comes to their feet here at Giants Stadium. It's Body. He's got it. Ball is loose on the play. West Virginia's got the football. David Luckwood. Body coughed it up after getting the necessary yardage for the first down. And number 41, David Lockwood from Rochester, Pennsylvania, makes the play. Right place, right time, as Deron Ellis puts his helmet right into that football as Body had it tucked underneath. 
Big play by the West Virginia defense. Dave Lockwood with around the football. Mountaineers taking over. Two minutes and 59 seconds to go in the first half, and on first down, Major Harris looks to throw. Harris, with plenty of time, has the man. Keith win. First down, West Virginia at the 44-yard line. Darren Sellis makes the stop, as Harris had a tremendous amount of time to unload it there. Just what we talked about, Tony. West Virginia coaching staff utilizing that tight end. Maybe they saw something in that film against Syracuse that they watched last night. 18-yard pickup on the play. Mountaineers go to Andre Johnson, and he is hit and hit hard there by Pat Gutovich, the inside linebacker. West Virginia with a four-point lead, looking for some more. Here is the halftime, comes close, two minutes and 21 seconds and counting. Three-yard pickup there by Andre Johnson. It's second down and seven. Major Harris, four of seven on the afternoon for 72 yards. Harris to Rembert. And the big guy could not come around to make the play, thrown behind Reggie Rembert. Rusty Mays, cornerback, was on the coverage, but that was Rembert's ball to catch, but it was thrown behind him. Big third down here, Tony, coming up. West Virginia has com successfully completed 53% of their third down conversions. With third and long, definitely a pass situation or may slip in a draw there. Mountaineers will go with a single man in the backfield. That is Rico Tyler. He'll stay back there for blocking purposes. Harris on third down and seven. Blitz is on. Harris with a lot of field to run. First down, West Virginia. One minute and 55 seconds to go here in the half as Major Harris scrambles for the first down. Doug Kokoski was after him, but Harris avoided the tackle and picks up 26 yards on the play, bringing the ball down to the 26-yard line in Rutgers territory. Major with a, just a super jump. His ability to turn his back on the line of scrimmage and get up the field, he's giving these uh, New York Riders a Broadway show. Wind coming in motion. The fake. And now it's Rembert. He ran it for a touchdown a week ago at Cincinnati. And he's running one here. Down to the three-yard line. 23 yards on the reverse play. West Virginia inside the five-yard line and pounding on the door here for a late score. West Virginia with the big play again. Watch number 55, Bob Kovach. It's like a big locomotive out there in front of Reggie. Super job. Kevin Koken, number 57, out there also. Those linemen getting downfield and just giving that little bit of extra effort to get Reggie into the end zone. Timeout has been taken by Rutgers. They'll try to regroup as West Virginia is pounding the ball away here on the Scarlet Knight defense. A long pass completion to Keith Wynn began this drive. And then a nice run by Harris on third down and seven, followed by the reverse to Reggie Rembert. Ball spotted at the two and a half yard line. Again, West Virginia's ability to strike at any moment. I mean, they can strike on just, just one play. They can break your back. Mountaineer fans, about eight to 10,000 of them approximately have made their way to Giants Stadium here today and they are standing on their feet in the familiar chant of let's go Mountaineers. A beautiful facility here at Giants Stadium. Really first class. The lower level seats have basically been filled in for the most part while the upper level seats are all empty here at Giants Stadium. Has to be one of the uh, the nicest pro facilities in the country Tony with the beautiful lounge area and locker room. Mountaineers will go with a double tight end formation. Keith Wynn and Adrian Moss and double fullback, so to speak, with Tyler and Taylor. And under Johnson has the hole and the touchdown. Yes, yes, that's the living fellow. Oh, no 
Touchdown number 10 of the season for Andrew Johnson as the Mountaineers take a 20 to 10 lead with one minute and 31 seconds to go here in the first half of action. Just a sprint draw, good solid block, block by Craig Taylor, the fullback, under just utilizing his athletic ability and going up over the top. Bauman's extra point attempt is good and West Virginia takes a 21 to 10 lead with 131 to go here in the first half of play. Well, that gives you a perfect indication of the explosiveness of West Virginia's offense. No doubt about that, Tony. We've been, we've been talking about it all year, their ability to strike, no matter if it's that option freeze play or the, the, the flanker reverse to Reggie Rembert or just the slip of draw in there for A.B. Brown. How many times have we seen that all year? Mountaineers really loaded the blockers in on that play with a double tight end formation. Craig Taylor was the fullback in front of Johnson, and they also had a wing back in there with Rico Tyler, so plenty of muscle pushing at that Rutgers defensive front as under Johnson finds himself a seam, and West Virginia takes a 21 to 10 lead. Johnson now with 13 yards on three carries. And it's good to see some of John Garcia's friends able to make the game today. <laughs> I thought you told those guys to stay back in the room. <laughs> Looks like they're from Greenwich Village or someplace. Six plays, 73 yards, very quick, one minute and 26 seconds as West Virginia scores the touchdown. Their second offensive touchdown of the ball game. Darrell Whitmore had the Mountaineers' first TD on an interception return. Charlie Bauman ready to put it into play. Ron Allen and James Can are back deep to return for the Scarlet Knights. Allen had the 92-yard TD return early on here in the ballgame. This is Scott Blanche, a tight end for the Scarlet Knights. Ball is loose on the play, and it looks as though Blanche was able to get back on top of it. That's the call. Steve Grant, number four, making the big hit on the play, jarring the ball loose. Well, that's one way to prevent the return. Squib it down there. Don't give it to that deep threat. Rutgers will start off with good field position. First down and 10 from the 39-yard line. You know, this Scott Ernie's not a bad quarterback. In one game, he threw for over 400 yards. 35 completions in that game against Vanderbilt. I don't think the Mountaineers have had 35 passing attempts in one game this season. Scarlet Knights will keep it on the ground as Mike Body brings it ahead to the 45-yard line. Six-yard pickup. Robert Pickett and Theron Ellis making the stop. Official blows the play dead. We've got a flag down. Five-yard face mask penalty will be the call against West Virginia. Five-yard face mask on the defense, the first down. Ball spotted right at midfield, the 50-yard line. Tyrone McQueen lining up as a receiver to the near side. Scott Ernie has not been on so far. He's two of nine. Over the middle, he goes to the tight end, Jenkins, and he underthrows. That'll bring up second down and 10. Big James Jenkins. Junior out of Staten Island, New York, comes into the ball game with eight catches. Not known for his pass catching ability, but he does a tremendous job blocking John. Yeah, West Virginia coaching staff is very impressed with this guy. They think he's the best athlete on the football team. Brett Mersola as a receiver up top. Tyrone McQueen to the left side. Second down and ten. Mike Body looks for room. Ron Ellis brings him down at midfield. One minute mark of the first half. West Virginia has come back to take a 21 to 10 lead. The Mountaineers trailing at 10 to seven. Third down. And Ernie badly throws the ball intended over there for Tyrone McQueen. Preston Waters on the coverage for West Virginia. Got a good shot at that, That'll bring up fourth <laughs> down and Dick Anderson will bring on the punt team. So Scott Ernie's having trouble. Now two of 11 throwing. He's been hot and cold all year, and uh, it'll just take some time. Matt O'Connell 
averaging 36 yards on two kicks so far. Rannis Bell waits back for West Virginia on the 10-yard line. Connell off to the right on this one. And Rutgers should get a good touchdown here. Rolling, rolling, and they touch it down at the three-yard line. 36 seconds to go, first half of play. And West Virginia will start off from inside the five-yard line. Mountaineers, no doubt, will just kill off the clock here. They lead it by 11 points, 21 to 10. There's Dick Anderson. He was an outstanding tight end for Penn State, 1961 and 1963. He was also captain of the baseball team at Penn State his senior year. This is season number five at Rutgers for Dick Anderson. He comes in today's game with 24 wins, 26 losses, and two ties. So two games under 500 for Dick Anderson in his stay here at Rutgers. He's had some very big wins, and he's had some very disappointing losses. And I'm sure the last three games have been of the disappointing fashion, losses to Army, Temple, and to Pitt. And Major Harris on the quarterback keep. And the Mountaineers will be content to run down the clock here. 23 seconds of counting. And Don Nealon coordinating things down so that the Mountaineers can just chew up the clock here. Clock continues to wind down now under 10 seconds. And that will be it for the first half of play. Three zeros across to the Mountaineers and the Scarlet Knights head into the locker room here at Giant Stadium with West Virginia holding an 11-point lead. The Mountaineers 21 and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights 10. Stay tuned for our halftime activity. Seen first half of play to say the least. We had a 7-7 score with under two minutes gone by in the game. We saw a kickoff return for a touchdown. We saw an interception return for a touchdown. But by the time things came down to what we could call a, a more normal period of play, West Virginia did a very good job marching on Rutgers. And at times, Rutgers showed the ability to march the ball on West Virginia. Take a look at the average field position. The Mountaineers starting off from the 37-yard line, which is considered excellent. Rutgers beginning their possessions on the average from the 23-yard line. And you take a look at that average on first down, which is so, in, so important, 5.8 yards for West Virginia, 1.4 for Rutgers, and John, that really sets up what you're going to do on second down and gives you the ability to do a lot more things when you can pick up five on your first play. Mountaineers will receive the opening kickoff here in the second half of play. Doug Geisler will kick the ball off for Rutgers. Carmen Sclafani had been kicking off, but now they'll put Geisler into the lineup for Rutgers. At one point, West Virginia trailed this game 10 to seven, but they came right back and have taken a 21 to 10 lead. And it will be Jamie Lamont starting off from the 15 yard line, the senior from Washington, Pennsylvania, over the 25 yard line in West Virginia. will start up first down and 10 from just over the 25. Joe Altamar makes the stop there on number 15. Jamie Lamont handling the kickoff returns for the Mountaineers. He's the number two man at the split end position. Comes into the ball game with 14 catches. So Major and company will have a good first down and 10 situation here as they start it off from the 28-yard line. Major four of eight in the first half. That included one touchdown pass. And the give goes to A.B. Brown with a big hole first down West Virginia as he works the ball down to the 45-yard line. Vaughn McCoy and Glenn Miller make the stop on Anthony Brown. A 17-yard pickup for A.B. Brown. A.B. with 51 yards in the first half of play. That brings him up to 68 yards on 15 carries. And Major Harris tripping there as he starts back. Harris with plenty of time as Calvin Phillips picks up a couple on the play. That's Calvin's first reception of the afternoon. Mike Conlin, number 95, makes the stop there on Cal Phillips, who came into the game as the team's leading receiver with 21 catches. Picks up four there on the play. Phillips and Reggie Rembert have been having a friendly duel all season as to the team's pass reception lead. Phillips came in with 21, Rembert with 20, and Reggie had that touchdown catch. 
in the first half. So Phillips now still on top by one. Bit of a delay, and A.B. Brown trips up. Pick up of a yard on the play, and that'll bring up third down. Injured Mountaineer down on the play. And it's West Virginia center, number 57, Kevin Koken. Kevin Koken shaking up. One of the keys to the West Virginia offensive line, a senior from Youngstown, Ohio. Taking a look at the right leg of Koken. Major Harris will use the time. Talk things over with the WVU coaching staff. Number 51, Jeff Price. Warming up on the sideline, he will go in for Kevin Kokin. 13 minutes and 42 seconds to go. Third quarter of action. Just underway here in the second half. Calvin Phillips. Randis Bell and Reggie Rembert now coming into the lineup for West Virginia. A.B. Brown will go out. Major Harris there with head coach Don Neal. And you see next to Harris is Jeff Price, number 51. So Price will come into the game for the Mountaineers in place of Kevin Kokin. A year ago, Major Harris had 304 yards of total offense against the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. In the first half alone today, he rushed for 57 yards, threw for another 96. So he's got 153 yards of total offense so far here today and continues to play extremely well. The sophomore season for the Mountaineers. And there's a look at Scott Ernie, Rutgers' starting quarterback, who really struggled in the first half of action. Ernie finished up 2 of 11 for just 24 yards and the two interceptions, one of which really came back to haunt him as Darrell Whitmore ran it in for a touchdown. Well, a good sight here as Ernie continues to warm up, and that's Kevin Koken. Walking off, for the most part, under his own power as he tests out that right leg. Big Kevin Koken, one of the nicest guys on this Mountaineer team. If you notice there on his right leg, Tony, he had that knee brace, and that thing can prevent a very serious knee injury. Luckily, he had it on that time. Jeff Price now, the new center into the game for West Virginia, so the first couple of snaps here very important on the exchange to Harris. Second down and seven. Major on the roll. As his man, first down West Virginia, down to Calvin Phillips. Spotted at the 28-yard line, number 41, Rusty Mays got beat on the play as Calvin Phillips makes his second catch of the half and his second catch of the ball game. Tremendous season for the senior from Boynton Beach, Florida. Craig Taylor doing a real nice job there, sealing that outside and letting Major get to the outside and get to that perimeter. Nice throw and catch. Mountaineers began this drive back at their own 28. So now they're at the 28 of Rutgers. A.B. Brown, bit of a seam, moves it ahead to the 25-yard line. So a pickup of two, that'll bring up second down and eight. Tim Lester, number 98, makes the stop there on Brown. Mountaineers come into this one averaging 44 points per game. They put 21 on the board in the first half, and they're looking for their first score here in the second half. Rembert lining up far up top. Win now coming over in motion out of the I formation. And it's the fullback, Craig Taylor. Ahead for a yard, that'll be all. Chuck Paul, reserve defensive tackle, makes the stop there on Craig Taylor. This is a big drive for West Virginia, able to come down here after halftime, settle things down, use that clock up, and put some points on the board. Third down and six, West Virginia on third down conversions is five of seven. Harris. Blitz is on, looking for Rembert. Oh, a beautiful defensive play there. Darren Sellers and Rusty Mays 
just got their hands in in time as Reggie Rembert was looking for his second touchdown catch of the ball game. Nice throw, but a good defensive job there by Sellers and Mays. Notice number 79, Doug Kokoski coming in your picture there with a, a linebacker blitz. Watch Reggie. He's able to take a hit. He gets one right here in the soup coolers. Field goal attempt now for the Mountaineers. A 41-yard attempt. Bauman 0 for 2 this afternoon. A 41-yarder this time is no good. Off to the right. And Charlie Bauman is having his worst field goal kicking day as a Mountaineer. Coming into this one, he had missed three all season in 20 attempts. And now he's 0 for 3 here today. So West Virginia drives but does not come away with points. Rutgers will take over first down and 10 from the 24 yard line. Scott Ernie looking to get himself warmed up after a 2 of 11 first half. Ernie on the roll. Turnbull in pursuit. And Elvoid Mays on the coverage of Brett Marsola. So Rutgers comes out firing. That'll bring up second down and 10. Outside linebacker Ronaldo Turnbull doing a good job there pressuring Ernie, John. That's right. He, he's, his job is not to let Ernie get outside and put the D-backs in a position where they have to come up and make, make the play on the run. He did a great job that time. Alvoid Mays and Willie Edwards on the corners for West Virginia. The free safety is Daryl Whitmore and Bo Orlando the strong safety. On second down and 10, Turnbull again. James Can on the reception, he's got room. And Can initially hit there by Willie Edwards and brought down by Chris Herring. That's good for a first down for the Scarlet Knights. And they'll spot the ball ahead to the 36 yard line, 37. It's a real nice play selection by Dick Anderson, a throwback screen. Pretty good read by Robert Pickard on that thing. Just couldn't make the tackle. Nice job there by Willie Edwards. Didn't bite on the fakes of James Can. Makes the initial hit. So the Scarlet Knights with their first first down of the half. And Ernie again looks to throw. And we'll have a penalty on this one as Tyrone McQueen, the intended receiver, was dragged down by L. Void Mays. Pass interference is the call against the Mountaineers. The Mountaineer fans thinking that's a questionable call with the strip. That'll bring up a first down here for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Let's take another look. You see Ronaldo Turnbull get knocked off his feet there. That enabled Ernie to get outside and have the ability to throw that ball. Tough one to call there. Yeah, it's questionable. Bang, bang play. Nonetheless, Rutgers has the ball down to the 48-yard line, looking to bring it into West Virginia territory on first down. Eric Young in motion. And they keep it on the ground to body. And Bo Orlando comes up to make the stop behind the line of scrimmage. Number 22, Bo Orlando, the senior out of Berwick, Pennsylvania. The big play bo guy, Bo Orlando, Back here near his hometown in Berwick, Pennsylvania, just a few short hours from here. Good job by Bo Orlando as he drags down Mike Body. Two yard loss on the play. Under 11 minutes to go here in the third quarter. Rutgers first possession of the second half. Ernie across the middle has his tight end James Jenkins. Down to the 30-yard line. First down for the Scarlet Knights. Daryl Whitmore and Willie Edwards on the stop as James Jenkins comes up with his 10th catch of the season. A 24-yard pickup for James Jenkins. Again, the West Virginia coaching staff very concerned about number 82, James Jenkins, and his ability, his athletic ability, being able to run and, and block like he can. There was a throwback with Mr. Jenkins just running a little hook pattern underneath. 
Jenkins apparently injured his knee on the play. He was never hit as he went down and was down because of his knee touching the ground, but he's shaken up. And you see him there at the 35-yard line with the knee. There's a look at Kevin Koken. He has sprained his knee, and he will not return to action this afternoon. Senior out of Youngstown, Ohio, obviously very disappointed. And hopefully, John, that is just a minor sprain for Kevin Koken. This is where that depth pays off, Tony. Number 51, Jeff Price, has played a lot of football all year, about every third series. And that was Coach Nealon's intentions of rotating those people every third series just for opportunities like this. First down and 10. The Scarlet Knights with the ball on the West Virginia 29. Ernie to body. He's in trouble. Loses the ball and picks it back up. Up towards the 25-yard line, Bo Orlando makes the stop. Darrell Whitmore, slow to get up on the play. He is limping. Big Pat Marlette, number 95, just backed his defensive tackle up and made a big clog in that play. Body was awful lucky. That ball dropped, taking that bounce right back into his hands. Whitmore injures himself on the play, and Zippy Shear will come in to play free safety. Second down and seven for the Knights. West Virginia showing pressure. Body makes the catch. Bo Orlando there to make the hit. Ernie now seeming to become more comfortable with his throwing. Five of 15. Started off the second half. Two of 11. What we're seeing, Tony, is a, a very controlled passing game. I mean, they're going to keep you off balance. They'll slip a run in there every once in a while. Very short. Let's do what Ernie does best. And that's show those little 10 and 15 yard patterns. Big third down play here. Third down and three. Ernie has the pass deflected. So West Virginia holds on third down and now it's up to Dick Anderson and he'll send the field goal unit out. Ronaldo Turnbull Number 87 getting his hand on the ball here as he has all season long. That's his third pass deflection, but Turnbull has become a nightmare for opposing quarterbacks. They'll spot the ball on the 30-yard line. This will be a 40-yard attempt for Cameron Sclafani. Definitely within his range. The kick, though, just sneaks in there. It was short, but it just crossed over the bar. Rutgers comes back to get three, 21-13, here in the third quarter of play. 